Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. We'll be starting in one minute just while people are getting logged in here, so please hang tight. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. We're excited you've joined us for today's session on 15 proven ways to boost your direct mail response. A few housekeeping details before we get started. This session is being recorded, and you should receive a link to the recording uh, tomorrow by email. Please feel free to share this webinar content, content with colleagues that could not attend today. A question and answer session will immediately follow the presentation. If you have a question for our speaker, please type it into the questions box in your GoToWebinar panel on the right side of your screen. This webinar is hosted and sponsored by Subtle Strauss. Subtle Strauss was founded in 1910. Over 100 years, our company has built up the equipment and expertise to handle almost any print project. We offer creative design services, web, sheet bed, and digital printing, wide format printing, direct and transactional mail, a print-on-demand technology for distributed <clears throat> networks, along with kitting and fulfillment. Bell and Howell recently ranked Subtle Strauss number 35 out of the 200 largest direct mail service providers. For more information, please visit us on the web at subtlestrauss.com. I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. Paul Bobnack is a direct mail consultant and freelance content writer. From 1998 to 2017, he reviewed thousands of marketing campaigns every year as the director of Who's Mailing What, the world's most comprehensive library of direct mail and email. He has created written and video content for Target Marketing, Total Retail, Printing Impressions, and Nonprofit Pro. Paul, I'm going to hand it over to you now, and you can take it away. Okay, thanks very much. Well, hello everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. I'm very happy to be here with everyone today and to talk about uh, some of the best ways that you can make your direct mail better. As Megan said, I ran Who's Mailing What for about 20 years. And uh, let me explain what Who's Mailing What is. Um, Who's Mailing What is the world's most comprehensive library of direct mail. Uh, founded in 1984 by Denny and Peggy Hatch. Uh, it was based on a simple idea uh, that to be successful in direct mail, you have to look at and study the direct mail that comes in to take a look at controls and to see what works. Uh, and then after that, to steal smart. Uh, that is basically is basically the whole idea of today's uh, webinar, which is to look at uh, those tactics and practices uh, that stand the test of time and also point to future success in direct mail. Um, you know, I'm sure you hear it all the time that direct mail is dead, that print is dead, that all of this is old technology that's not relevant to modern audiences. Um, a lot of people say that direct mail doesn't work, uh, that it doesn't deliver good ROI, or that it's too expensive. And we all know that there are challenges, but I always look at companies like Jet.com, uh, Amazon, Uber, Google, Wayfair, Fresh Direct, Bonobos, a lot of high-tech e-commerce companies that you would think uh, from the way that they market themselves would have no interest in direct mail. And yet, uh, as you can see, they actually do quite a bit of direct mail. Um, and that's important because it indicates something that's going on in the marketplace, which is that there are companies that understand that direct mail has uh, value in today's marketplace. Um, in 2016, I attended the National Postal Forum in Nashville, and on one of the keynote panels, um, Harris Diamond, the CEO of McCann Worldwide, uh, was talking about what he called the mail moment. 
And uh, it was a very, very, very fascinating um, series of points that he was making about, uh, from his standpoint, as a brand marketer, as a uh, ad agency executive for one of the biggest um, companies in the world with tons of brands under his uh, under his purview that uh, he thought that direct mail, uh, the direct mail moment had come. And what does that mean? Well, the mail moment, as he defined it, is twofold. First, it's about that time when um, consumers, all of us, every day, um, get a direct mail piece at home. Uh, you know, you get home from your work or whatever else every day. You have hold it in your hands. It's tactile. It's immediate. And it kind of dovetailed with a uh, previous campaign that the Postal Service had run, uh, basically on that on that theme about um, you know that's the time for discovery. That's the time to wow the customer. But he also saw the mail moment as being uh, you know the the time that's a, that was present then and it's still ahead of us today, which is the opportunity for all of us who are part of this gigantic ecosystem of marketers and printers and all of the uh, other businesses that are part of, a, part of this to really look at what is uh, working in direct mail today and look at all the technologies that are um, coming online and uh, being utilized to really make uh, direct mail stronger and more powerful than it ever has been before. Uh, so it's kind of a rah-rah moment for him and for a lot of us in the audience, uh, thinking about how we can use direct mail to be more engaging across uh, all of the senses, uh, whether it's using technology or the size and shape of a direct mail piece, uh, using texture or sense, uh, tying in with multi-channel in, in you know, dozens of different ways. Um, and it's also about thinking, uh, thinking about how direct mail connects with consumers in newer generations like millennials and Gen Z in a way that it doesn't necessarily with uh, older generations. Um, and I'll talk a little more about uh, why that's important later. Um, and I bring that up um, because I, I think often about the classic direct mail rule by um, by Ed Mayer, uh, which goes back decades and decades. And what Ed Mayer said is that success in direct mail is based 40% on the list that you use, 40% uh, on the offer, and 20% on everything else. And so that's your uh, creative use, the formats, um, I still think that's valid today, but in the course of the presentation, uh, I hope to show you some ways that you can look at enhancing all three of those important elements. So let's get to it. Uh, the first item to look at is teasers. Um, when you get a piece of mail for the first time, what's the first thing you notice? Uh, it's whatever's on the front of the direct mail piece, right? Um, it's kind of like an email when you're looking through your uh, your inbox and you're scrolling through. Uh, you know, I usually jump right to the subject line even before looking at uh, the sender name. Uh, it should be something that grabs you. It should be something uh, that you know, gets the envelope open. That's ultimately the goal of it. And, you know, for this example, this is uh, from a Nutrition Action Health Letter, which is a, uh, a long time health newsletter. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the classic that Mel Martin wrote, um, you know, in his long career for uh, Bottom Line Personal, which was another newsletter. Uh, what never to eat on an airplane. You know, things like this, it really just 
uh, does its job so well, which is to get you inside the envelope. Um, this, on the other hand, this is a far more recent mailing from the Ocean Conservancy. Um, you know, besides the teaser, the teaser is sort of set off as well by uh, by the photo of the shark. Uh, Ten things you never knew about the ocean that will amaze you. Number three will take your breath away. Well, the first thing I saw uh, thought about when I saw that was that this is like clickbait or uh, a BuzzFeed um, a BuzzFeed headline. Uh, you know, it's easily understandable. Um, it's enticing and you want to see what it's about right away. And in this case, the teaser continued to the backside of the envelope uh, where it said, uh, in number one, we'll make you cry. Well, the first part of this right here didn't make you immediately open the envelope. I would say that probably flipping it over to the other side would definitely get the job done more. And uh, like all good teasers uh, that are specific in this case, uh, the content on the inside is easily found to, uh, you know, match back to what the teaser says. These are two, um, these are two teasers that really uh, do a couple of things very well. Um, first, they are they use big type, so you can't miss them, uh, and. Uh, they ask a question. Um, it's one of those things that when you when you see it, it makes you stop in your tracks and you think, you think, well, maybe my bill has gone up. Uh, maybe I should do something about it. It's making you think about a pain point, uh, which, you know, is an important, um, an important point that can be addressed um, by what's inside. It's also kind of unusual, um, but still worthwhile, uh, because in each case, these two direct competitors of each other reference, you know, their direct competition and do it almost with the exact same language, uh, which I thought is hilarious. So let's move on to a larger point, which is envelopes. Uh, envelopes, I really have a huge affinity for. In fact, um, very recently I've been doing a series of videos for uh, Target Marketing Magazine, my uh, my friends there, uh, where I look at all kinds of different aspects about what you can do um, as a marketer to get your envelopes opened. Um, in some cases, it's uh, a marketing tactic in some cases, it may be a printing technique uh, or a paper. Uh, there are all kinds of different uh, techniques that you can use to get people to open your envelopes. Um, and that can get exhaustive. But in this case, one of the ones that I see uh, fairly recently is using big numbers. Um, in this case, uh, Bank of America uh, uses this giant zero. It's something that I've seen used by other companies like MetLife on uh, the front of their uh, on the front of their envelopes. It's not subtle. Um, they back it up with multiple zeros, uh, uh, which uh, you know, if you don't know what they're exactly offering with that, then you're kind of kind of be lost with that. And this is one provided by uh, Subtle Strauss, uh, really just uh, a terrific mail piece. Um, <clears throat> it's an oversized pink envelope printed with metallic ink. You see it there in the back. And it, uh, in this case, housing a pull tab event invitation, very clever mailing. Um, think about color. Think about uh, how much everything in your uh, in your mailbox or in your customer's mailbox is like a white envelope and how after a while it all kind of looks the same. Color stands out, black envelopes stand out. Um, envelopes with a, a full color bleed. Um, you know, amazing pictures that pop. All those things stand out to 
uh, to customers in the mailbox. And another uh, useful tactic um, is texture. Texture uh, is really highly underrated considering you know the number of, of uh, and, the, and the variety of papers that exist um, today and what you can do with them. Um, this is one from MetLife, it's a number 10. Um, and it, to feel it, it has this grainy feel like a, like a, like a paper bag. Um, and it's really something that pops out simply for that reason, uh, for that reason alone. This is one from uh, Barclays Bank, uh, Delaware for their uh, one of their credit cards, um, and it's uh, it's a basic like six by nine envelope. Uh, but what stands out about it is the swoosh that you see, which uh, starts from the bottom of the envelope and kind of swirls up underneath the address area, up to the top, and it continues around the back. Um, and while the the rest of the envelope uh, has a kind of like a conventional finish. This has uh, spot UV coating, and it's um, something that is appealing both visually um, and, you know, more to the point, um, the texture. It really, um, it really pops. Uh, and on the back, it continues, as I said, the swirl, but it also has a, a representation of the credit card itself also with uh, printed with spot UV. Uh, here's another terrific example of texture. Uh, this was mailed by Ford and it's promoting their uh, F-series pickups. And the uh, paper that was used, um, again, it kind of has this gritty, um, gravelly, sort of dirt-like feel to it, um, which creates an association in the uh, the mind of the customer uh, between the paper that's used be, uh, and the uh, the toughness of of the truck, which is uh, you know something that again you really want to do. You want to uh, consider the way that the uh, the paper that you use or the ink that you put on that paper. Um, can really create that association in the mind of your uh, in the mind of your customer. Dimensional mailings are um, are really awesome. Um, during my time with Who's Mailing What, they were uh, fairly uh, rare because they're mailed in um, you know for the most case in um, smaller quantities but they have the advantage of really capturing the attention of, um, of the recipients. And uh, this is a terrific one that Subtle Strauss did for Karistan. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's a sample of um, their carpeting. It has this little um, tag on it, uh, which is personalized and uh, it's, it's just really cool. It's tactile. Um, it's a product sample. Um, so you can kind of like, as it directs you to, uh, you can kind of feel it to see how effective it is um, as a carpeting and it uh, drives traffic. It drives traffic uh, to, uh, to the retail stores. Um, and I point out about this Subtle Strauss uh, mailing and, and all the uh, other ones. Um, there are profiles available um, for them on Saul Strauss's website and uh, Pinterest pages. Uh, a lot of these have won awards and uh, it's just, you know, another example of the terrific kind of work that, um, that they do. So this one was um, also a subtle Strauss piece done for OneNick, which is an IT services company. Um, it was mailed in a simple dimensional um, outer envelope. So it had some, you know, thickness to it, had some weight or heft to the envelope, uh, but you really don't get the full, uh, 
you know, power of it until you open it up. And the insert uh, is a digitally printed uh, die cut piece um, and it's wrapped around this like rigid 3D core. Uh, the piece opens up like a, like a shirt, which you can see, and, and it has this, um, you know, ruler running down the side. And again, it's um, using that um, dimensionality aspect to uh, make the connection. In this case, they're talking about how uh, one neck can provide tailored solutions to their customers, and it's um, pretty powerful that way. Uh, another subtle Strauss piece, um, and something that I would, you know, love to receive. Uh, I'm sure that um, this has been incredibly popular. Um, mailed uh, as a um, as a thank you to uh, customers. Um, it's a, just a large poster, an 18 by 24 inch poster, um, conventionally printed, but it's mailed in this tube. Uh, who gets tube mailings? I mean, um, you know, when you get something like that, it's something of uh, of real value. Um, I've seen very few tube mailings over the years, and uh, for the most part, it's kind of like a disappointment about uh, you know, the, the product or service that's being promoted. Um, that's not true in this case. And, you know, here it's really something of, uh, of value, um, you know, once it's opened up. And uh, so think about, uh, you know, what you're putting inside that tube and what it means to the customer once you, uh, once they open it up. So size, size is another aspect of uh, direct mail that can really um, uh, drive a higher response simply because it's so different from um, what else is being done uh, and what else shows up in your mailbox. Um, this is a nine by 12 um, oversized envelope um, mailed by Comcast and it, uh, it stands out not only because of the size, not only because it, uh, you know, kind of mimics the look of an express uh, mail sort of envelope. It has, you know, that faux uh, lasered on area down towards the bottom that kind of looks like a tracking sticker. Um, but it, it really stands out because once you open it up, there's only uh, a single page inside. And it's a uh, very short letter to, um, a uh, business customer uh, offering business internet service, and that's it. There's no brochure, uh, you know, nothing else. It's a it's a quick read to that audience, but it really stands out again because of because of the size of it. Um, here's another great mailing. This is from uh, Lifetime, which is a, uh, a national fitness chain, um, and they're going through. Um, you know, uh, some subtle changes to their branding. And this piece is a good example of that. Um, it's basically a uh, 12 and a quarter by nine and a quarter brochure, uh, kind of like with a soft touch uh, uh, printing uh, finish on the cover, uh, heavier stock paper. Uh, it speaks more to, um, you know, a bit more of a higher end audience, um, especially when you uh, really see how they, um, um, the colors, um, the large photographs inside, um, it definitely is very different from what else is done in that, um, in, in, you know, that niche of um, fitness clubs, fitness club marketing. Postcards, uh, I love postcards um, because they're, they can be so um, simple, um, inexpensive, and they're really, you know, highly effective when they target prospects with, uh, with the right offer. They don't try to keep things very um, complicated. Um, you know, a well-designed postcard gets the customer to focus on 
one or two or three things um, and have like a clear call to action. Um, you know, a, a, a postcard shouldn't try and take the place uh, of, a, of a full size direct mail effort. Um, there's just not that space available. Um, something like this one um, from DoorDash, which is uh, an e-commerce food delivery company. Uh, you know, they're an example of this. What they do is they partner with local restaurants uh, through an app and uh, consumers can get food from these local restaurants delivered uh, to their home or office. And there's a bunch of, um, you know, companies that have this business model and do very well with it. Um, and a lot of them, by the way, um, use exactly this. They use like a six by 11 uh, postcard, uh, very heavy users of it. Here, it's very clear to understand what they want you to do. Um, they tell you what restaurants they're working with. They give you three easy to follow steps about um, um, how, to, uh, how to act. And you get a $5 off um, discount, which is, uh, again, simple. Simple to understand what you want uh, the customer to do. Um, here's another one from Kia, which is going to um, it's going to a current customer, um, reminding her that her car is overdue for maintenance. So um, there are you know coupons here, uh, very simple, uh, very simple to understand. Um, the front side of this is a lot more of like a soft sell uh, photograph reminding. You know, um, the driver that their car needs maintenance, but you know, keeping it keeping it low key, um, and to uh, to respond, it has you know the phone number there. Um, there's a, an email address for um, their uh, one of the service reps, but it has a QR code, um, and I think you know uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later on. But again, this is a, a really simple way to incorporate, uh, you know, multi-channel with a postcard. Um, it doesn't get much simpler than that. So uh, <clears throat> another great tactic, which uh, really works at uh, driving up response, is uh, a way of encountering skepticism from uh, from prospects and customers. Um, you know, this is especially true of a company like Cabbage, which is uh, an online B2B lender, one of, you know, tons of uh, e-commerce startups. Uh, people, you know, may not have heard of these companies, or even if there are companies like uh, uh, companies that have been around for years, you know, what is it that sets that company apart? Uh, why should they choose, why should a consumer choose that company instead of um, someone else? Uh, so a good way to demonstrate credibility uh, is to show that you, uh, you know, you have credibility with outside experts. So in this case, Cabbage has an endorsement from the uh, Better Business Bureau. They have an A-plus rating, and they've also been recognized uh, by Forbes magazine uh, as uh, one of their top most promising companies for two years running. Uh, again, this is a tactic that you see um, some e-commerce companies using. And uh, uh, in a lot of cases, they use other uh, e-commerce brands that people know to, uh, to bolster their claims. Here's a, a typical one you see a lot in uh, automotive uh, in the automotive niche, where um, Subaru, in a um, in a five-panel uh, folded self mailer, devotes an entire panel talking about um, their uh, ratings from Kelly Blue Book, which most people know. Um, you know they're familiar with it. It's part of uh, TV advertising, of course. Uh, so it's you know, it's important for 
uh, for Subaru to talk about that. And uh, something else interesting that they do on this mail piece, which I won't show, um, is Subaru also talks about how they are partnered with a, a wide variety of, uh, of nonprofits. Um, this particular mailing was part of their uh, um, Share the Love campaign, uh, wherein when you buy Subaru, part of your um, purchase, uh, you know, a donation is made to um, one of these charities that you designate. So in a way, by showing their logos and saying that we're doing this, it's kind of also a um, another way that Subaru uh, uses the power of endorsements. Um, something else to think about too with that is, um, you know, the nonprofits, how many nonprofits on their direct mail reference Charity Navigator and how many stars they get from Charity Navigator or from the uh, Better Business Bureau Giving Alliance or other uh, watchdog groups. Uh, it's important if you're giving money, you want to know that your money is going to be uh, handled safely. Um, and uh, something for small businesses to think about is uh, the way that you can utilize local um, local you know authorities to uh, provide endorsements. If you're um, you know a small contractor, uh, you know a lot of different small businesses that do simple direct mail, even if even if it's with a postcard. Um, if you have Yelp ratings, if you have Facebook uh, ratings, you can also easily put them on your direct mail um, to uh, you know use power of endorsement. So emotions, uh, you know, emotions are so incredibly underrated in uh, in direct mail. Um, you know, it's um, it's something I think about when um, when when um, considering um, how much direct mail out, is out there and good direct mail does have some sort of an emotional appeal. Um, years ago, uh, Bob Hacker, who was, um, you know, a famous uh, ad agency founder, and Axel Anderson, um, a direct response um, marketer um, genius, um, they basically came up with a list of seven drivers of emotional response that work in direct mail. Um, there are plenty of others, but there are seven that they came up with are uh, greed, anger, flattery, exclusivity, guilt, salvation, uh, and fear. Um, as, as Bob Hacker put it, um, if your copy isn't dripping with one or more of these, tear it up and start all over. Um, I think with, you know, direct mail, um, copy and images in these cases uh, really has a lot of power to it. Um, when I was with Who's Mailing What, we tracked um, a few thousand pieces of mail called the grand controls. These are the money makers, the box office champions, the, the greatest direct mail pieces ever mailed. Um, about 1,700 of them that had been around for three years or more. And of all these 1,700 pieces of mail, 98% of them had at least one of these, um, you know, emotional drivers uh, underlying it. Um, on almost every case, uh, it was, you know, just something that was really part of, you know, um, really powerful as part of the appeal. Um, and I can't underline that enough. Because really, when, when you're talking about any kind of direct mail, whether it's uh, B2B or B2C, um, it can be powerful. Uh, you know, think about your audience. Your audience, even if it's um, a B2B direct mail campaign, you're still talking to people, and people respond uh, to emotions when uh, they need to be persuaded to uh, to 
buy to, to order to donate or to uh, to get more information about something um, so this one you know this one's really pretty obviously um, you know is sort of a little um, anger and uh, guilt at the same time this one is guilt all the way um, this one by the way was mail for about four or five years um, and the image on the front just really just tells part of the story. It's um, um, it's a very powerful story inside. And uh, even you know a, a consumer marketer like uh, Consumer Reports, um, you know Tylenol is gentler on your stomach than some pain relievers, but and it continues like that. Um, you, you want to read what's inside. You're, you're afraid of what kind of lessons you'll need to learn. Um, and that's why you know, that's why Consumer Reports is there. So involvement devices are um, another really terrific uh, part of direct mail. <clears throat> what you want people to do is stop what they're doing as they're going, through, you know, looking at your direct mail piece or going through it, uh, stop in their tracks and, you know, um, really look at it, really um, interact with it in a different way than they might if it's just a simpler uh, piece of mail, like a like a brochure uh, or a letter with some sort of insert. Give them something to do. Um, this is an example right here from Harvard Heart Letter, where they have this quiz. Um, you start reading through the quiz, take this little heart health quiz, taking blood pressure in both arms may reveal a higher heart attack risk. Um, it gives you something to do, rather than just stating a few facts that you may totally go over your head. Um, it, again, gives you something to do, something to think about, and in order to get your answers, you have to go inside and read. And that starts you, you know, that starts you on the road to responding. Here's another great example. Um, this is from Pierce College, a um, college in Philadelphia. Uh, and it mailed this um, uh, bubble, you know, this bubble um, mailer. Um, very plain looking. But when you lift it up and you're, it just kind of shifts around in your hands, you can feel that something's moving inside, something's, something's flopping around. So you open it up and you see that it's this, um, you know, this lanyard and um, the, uh, the letter, again, very simple letter, one page, uh, telling you that, um, that there's, uh, uh, you know, you can set up uh, a tour of the, uh, of the school. Um, and this will be your ticket inside. Um, so whether you call it like an uh, and treat it as an all access pass or a backstage pass, a VIP, uh, everybody wants to feel special. Everybody want to feel that they have something exclusive going on to go back to that emotional driver. Um, and on top of that, it's tangible and it's tangible like in a cool way or a different way than you know, a simple piece of paper would be, or a simple call to action that says, uh, you know, call and get your name on a list, or, uh, you know, uh, go to this website and get your name on the list for a tour. Um, this is a lot more uh, inclusive. And this one I love, this is um, mailed, uh, this is put together by uh, Selda Strauss again, for the Wisconsin Association of uh, School Boards. Um, and it's promoting um, their convention, uh, convention scheduled for uh, for Milwaukee. So this um, brochure has this little flip book inside it. So when you pull the tab over there on the right part of, this, of the picture, uh, <clears throat> it flips through a bunch of pictures of, of um, sites to see and attractions in Milwaukee. Now, that's a lot more effective than just simply having a 
you know, a brochure that maybe folds out or has a couple of, uh, you know, snapshots of Milwaukee and leaves it at that. This is, you know, again, kind of like interactive um, and uh, and a lot more, uh, a lot more involving. Incentives are also a terrific way to stand out, and uh, and this is a topic that you could really you know spend all day talking about uh, exhaustively. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot uh, that you can use in direct mail to uh, to get people to act. Um, <clears throat> one of the best ones I've seen recently. This is from Nissan, and it's promoting uh, you know people going and visiting their uh, local showrooms. It has this pullout element, which is a uh, cash certificate for thousand dollars bonus cash on a on a car. Um, and on top of that, it also serves as a sweepstakes entry. So it does double duty, and it's it's terrific because it's uh, it's something tangible. It's you know it's a bit more meaningful than simply. Um, walking into a dealership and saying, you know, hey, I know that, you know, I have this this deal going on. Um, here's one that um, a local HVAC company um, mailed in, you know, very simple. You um, you can um, call and set up an appointment uh, for a checkup of your, of your heater and you can get a free carbon monoxide test. Simple coupon. And uh, this is an example of, um, you know, uh, incentives in um, in the nonprofit world are are really gigantic in impact. Um, you know, most people you know are very familiar with getting like tons of address labels and calendars uh, <clears throat> and all kinds of other goodies in the, in mail to kind of. Um, perm- Promotes the uh, promote the charity and to get you to, to give them money. Um, UNICEF USA in this case mailed an actual tote bag. Uh, that's an item that for a lot of nonprofits used to be a um, used to be the premium on the back end. Um, you know, make your donation um, and we'll send you the tote bag. But in this case, they included it, so it's um, you know added expense. On their end, but it's probably made up for um, by the um, by the response they get, especially because there are certain items that are kind of um, kind of slowly fading out of the picture, um, like address labels. So life events, life events are one of those really underutilized um, areas in uh, in direct mail. Um, you know, targeting targeting your marketing around them can be more effective than using uh, some broad demographic data. Um, you know, think about all the events that can trigger people to buy. Uh, birthdays, births, marriage, uh, moving is huge, retirement. Um, and as baby boomers move uh, into the retirement era, um, there are even more opportunities for marketers to uh, to reach out to this audience with uh, uh, even more products than they have before. Um, this is just a sampling of what they do. They're they're masters. Uh, they're masters at this. Um, AAA is another one, um, and this is something where companies, uh, if they have an affinity relationship with um, with somebody, they can really uh, offer a lot of different products and services through uh, through the mail. Um, somebody I've become aware of is a company called 365 Direct, which at first glance kind of seems like a um, like a co-op type of um, company uh, as far as how they use direct mail, like like Valpack or Money Mailer. Um, and what they do is they um, they base their their marketing though on um, on leveraging life events. So in this case, they 
um, mailed a folded tab self mailer in the recipient's birthday month. So she got this. And when you open it up, there's uh, four panels. I showed three here, but there's four panels of uh, personalized um, gift cards for restaurants, salons, spas, retail stores. Um, they're each personalized. They're tipped to uh, to the panel. Um, they have that high perceived value with the dollar amount on there, um, and they get activated when the customer goes online. Um, and they can, you know, of course, at that point, they can redeem them. And they also have the choice of opting in to get further communications, both um, or either or online or uh, through the mail. Um, so it's a terrific way for businesses of a lot of different sizes to, uh, to use targeted mail um, for, uh, for these life events. Content, you know, content is everything. Um, you know, I'm reminded of, a, of an old ad slogan, which um, um, some people may have heard before. Uh, an educated consumer is our best customer. Um, you know, it's an essential part of marketing today because it's focused on uh, the long term, like building credibility, authority, and trust. Um, so there's lots of companies in direct mail that use this. Um, and uh, so there's a couple examples here uh, of, of using content, but I think they're important also to show because to be really worthwhile, it has to be helpful content. Uh, Pensy Spices, they um, go into long explanations about some of, um, you know, some of the products that they sell, uh, going into exhaustive detail really about what they are, um, offering you content in the form of recipes, uh, stories, long form content uh, based around uh, social issues, uh, high quality photography and paper. Uh, it really has it all. Erickson Living, um, you know, is a national chain of retirement communities. And in their mix, they have these newspapers. And the newspapers are, um, are a mix of syndicated content and you know interesting stories and um, uh, articles about their communities but what they do is they uh, you know think about this format this format presents content to their intended audience um, which in this case would be um, probably 55 60 plus um, you know an audience that's familiar with the um, newspaper format um, so in that way, it really grabs their attention. And content is something that is not limited to, you know, large companies. Uh, even small companies can do it. Here's an example of a company called uh, Horizon Services. They're uh, a big HVAC company in um, operating in three states. And they mail this booklet. It's like a eight-page, uh, you know, six by ten booklet uh, with tips and uh, coupons for discounts, information on the training that their workers get, um, stories about their uh, involvement in the community. It kind of hits all bases and creates you know, a lot of credibility. And again, it's helpful because they give you information about things that you as a homeowner should be looking for without any expectation that you're gonna use them. You don't have to use them. You could simply be aware of um, um, of the condition that your system should be in and then go with another contractor. Um, but if they keep mailing like that, um, you know, they become the authority on it and they become the, um, you know, um, the voice that they trust. So um, new technology, of course, you know, people love talking about, um, you know, QR codes and pearls. This is a great example of one that was used by Chesson Hill Hospital, where the um, the new mover had two options. She could have used her um, smartphone to scan the QR code down on the bottom left corner, or she could use a pearl. Um, either way, you know they can instantly engage with the uh, direct mail piece, um, and you know at any time the marketer 
whoever that is, can um, um, you know know what their you know what their response is. I love this from Subtle Strauss. Um, again, a, a holiday thank you that was mailed out. Um, this you know seven put seven panel uh, conventionally printed fold, and so it, it's a thing of art. And on top of that, it has this um, um, digitally printed tip on that you see over on the the far right um, with QR and Pearl. So um, it's a way of doing two different things at once. You get the um, the high tech, and you get the artistic touch. Um, new technology. Um, I can't not mention the USPS uh, informed delivery. Uh, <clears throat> this is an example that I received. Um, and if you're not familiar with this, this is a uh, recently rolled out service of the USPS where you can um, get a preview, a sneak preview of the mail that you get in your mailbox every day uh, online. Uh, you can have that emailed to you as a notification. Uh, you can also set up a, uh, a mailbox on the USPS website to also look at preview images. And uh, what they are is they're uh, grayscale images of one side of uh, a letter size or a postcard size piece of mail. In this case, I had a piece of mail from uh, Progressive Insurance. But what they did in this case is when, um, they also have it below the grayscale photo, you can see there's a four color um, image of Flo the Progressive Woman with um, a call to action, get a quote now. So when you open this up in your email or online on the USPS site, you can immediately by tapping on that um, on that link, go to Progressive's website and get a quote within seconds or it'll call their number and you can get your quote that way. Um, it's really pretty cool. And I think it's important to mention for um, for marketers because right now it's free. If you're a marketer um, and you're using IMDB, you can um, put this campaign together with the campaign that you're putting into the mail um, and sync them so that you can you can do this so that your customer not only has the uh, grayscale image so that they know they are getting but they can bypass that if they want and they can go online uh, since they're online looking at this anyway and immediately take action um, as a marketer you can swap out that grayscale with a four color image if you want uh, you can change it every day if you want while it's sitting in their uh, in their inbox. So that that's that's a pretty cool thing that they're doing. And from what I understand, their response rates and the click through rates are astounding. Um, so people are really, you know, really getting into it. And um, from what I've heard lately, they're over I think about eight million users so far, which is pretty good. So um, VDP, VDP, of course, um, variable data printing, variable data personalization um, is, you know, something that is, again, really powerful tactic. Here's a mailing from Disney, um, six by nine, uh, folded self mailer with all this like speckly kind of uh, um, ink on the front to create a really cool shimmery effect. But when you open it up, there are two different offers that I show here. There were, I saw at least eight or nine different offers uh, or 89 or different packages where um, the basic offer is the same as part of this Pixie Dust campaign, um, going to um, past travelers. Uh, they segmented these. So on the left is an example of, uh, of, um, you know, mail that was segmented to um, married couples without children. The one on the right is to couples with young children, and there were other ones that they that they mailed to. Um, it's not all that sophisticated, but it is pretty cool that at least they have some information they're basing that on. 
This is an example of um, more variable data using publicly available information. This was um, uh, a uh, sort of a mocked up quote for homeowners insurance mailed by a local agency in Connecticut. Um, again, they you know uh, ran some numbers, provided them with an estimated premium. And these I love. These are from um, a company called uh, Patient First. It's a chain of uh, healthcare clinics. And uh, they show a map showing your location, where you are, uh, and how to get to that clinic. Same idea here. Well, we're from, about uh, five minutes away from the top of the hour, so I'm just letting you know. So here's another one from a company called uh, First Choice which is um, does the same thing. And on top of that, it uh, shows you uh, as well, like the uh, exact number of miles, uh, the exact address of that location. Um, very cool stuff. And, uh, you know, I think it, it's one of those things where you can really see um, how this can be applied for lots of retail businesses uh, by showing personalized maps on your direct mail. Finally, we come to um, the digital look. And, um, you know, this is kind of like borrowing some simple tactics. Um, you know, how people are familiar with certain, uh, certain designs from the online world. So it's incorporating them in your direct mail. Here's uh, from Renewal by Anderson. Uh, a postcard that was mailed showing the locations with all these Google map like pins of their customers in a given area. Uh, infographics, African Wildlife Foundation, it has that emotional appeal on in their letter, which is great, but they also have hard numbers on the back of the letter. Newmont University is uh, an online um, online institution um, geared towards uh, the tech crowd. And again, um, infographic with uh, word clouds and uh, logos and graphs and numbers uh, going, to a per going to a perspective student. And finally, uh, LifeLock, which incorporates these screenshots from online testimonials, uh, videos that they have on their website. Um, which is um, you know, a pretty cool way to repurpose all this content that they have. So finally, as takeaways, um, you know, my, take, my, my big takeaway is that, that Ed Mayer's rule still holds, but think about ways that new tools can affect the list, the offers, and the creative that you use and, and make them um, more powerful. Um, Think about uh, think about what data means. It's the end of days coming for spray and pray. Now you can really customize offers based on a huge variety of um, of segments and data points that you can choose from. You don't have to, but you can if you want. Um, and uh, the last piece of advice, um, last thought about this is uh, it's a smart idea to keep trying new things and, and keep thinking about uh, your audiences and how they have been raised, the new audiences especially, raised on digital first and how this is an opportunity, um, a moment for them to engage with, uh, with your mail in new and exciting ways. So thank you all for paying attention. Um, this is how you can get, reach out to me. Um, I love talking about direct mail. I'd be happy to chat with you further in th all these places. Um, and um, here's how, again, to connect with Subtle Strauss. And I thank you all for being here today. I thank Megan and Subtle Strauss for having me. Great. Thank you, Paul, for that informative presentation. We will now open it up for any last minute questions. I know we're at the top of the hour, so if anybody has a question they'd like to get in, please type it into the questions box in your GoToWebinar panel on the right side of your screen. While everyone's submitting questions, I wanted to remind you 
that this webinar has been sponsored by Sol Strauss. If you're looking for a trusted vendor to help guide you through your next print or mailing project, please consider us and request a quote at SolStrauss.com. You'll see I am using an endorsement here from Bell and Howell that we are awesome. number 35 <laughs> on the Love direct it. mail 200. So um, yeah. just a note that most of Paul's tips can be used for uh, things other than mail, whether you're doing marketing by email or, yep. I mean, emotion yep. and uh, endorsements and all these tips can apply in all areas of your marketing. Right, Paul? Absolutely. Subject lines. Subject lines are yeah. teasers, you know. Um, so I got a question here from Anne. Okay. And she says, uh, what are the most cost effective methods to increasing response rates? I work with a very limited budget, so paying additional for special paper, pull tabs, or unique folds isn't an option. What do you think? Well, I think probably the best thing to do would be to, uh, to simply do um, some tests. Um, you know, testing to me, it's, it's, it's kind of like the go-to uh, answer. Um, start small start with one or two things and, and test them and see what your response rate is. Yeah, great. And I think a lot of your tips don't really require any additional expense at all if you think about using things like emotion or right. um, if you have the means to do technology or if you said informed delivery is free right now. So. It is free. It is free. See, See how many you can add on without boosting the price of your project up. Right, and also keep in mind that you know, with um, with like production inkjet and some other printing technologies that are um, coming online, the cost of a lot of these is like of of creating like you know variable data direct mail is like dropping through the through the basement. Um, you know, I'm amazed at like the quality you get to create some direct mail pieces using using inkjet. Um, compared to what it was five years ago, and the cost is less, and the quality is amazing. So um, start small, though. Yeah, I can say uh, definitely your local printer can suggest more economical ways to achieve something you might see out there in the world, whether we have some economical folding techniques that mm -hmm. we've promoted in our blog, um, right. or if you're trying to get a, a texture or a look of like a wood surface, but you don't have the money to spend on it, we can kind of fake it <laughs> using right. inks and coatings and different things. So I definitely uh, just check out all your options. And, uh, and, and work with, I mean, designers, um, designers I know, I mean, they have um, all kinds of really cool ways that they can, um, they can come up with solutions, um, especially when they're knowledgeable about, uh, again, like you said, like inks, um, you know, inks are also go undergoing a revolution too. Mm -hmm. You know, finishing is also big. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you have more questions you didn't have a chance to ask, you can email them to me at marketing at com, and I can get back to you or connect you directly to Paul. Everyone watch your email tomorrow for a link to the recorded presentation and a PDF of the slides so you can refer back to these examples. Thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay.